Day 165 of the Ukrainian War Map, also known as the Russo-Ukrainian War. Juzzy here, and today is just a bit of another quick update of the Ukrainian War Map here in a simplified and down-to-earth approach. Now, as always, I like to start off with the, the Russian losses. Again, take these with a bit of a grain of salt, but hitting the 42,000 uh, mark, 42,000 there. Now, also, you can see wounded. If you do a math calculation, you'll see the they actually use about a 3 to 1 ratio. So 41,900 multiplied by 3 is 125,700 there. This is normal within wars using the military. You get a lot more wounded than you do get killed. It's just the nature of things there. But let's have a look at some of the military hardware as this is always a bit more reliable. And in the last 24 hours, there has been armored combat vehicles that have hit almost 20 more losses on the Russian side. Tanks are whopping 10 and artillery another five. So that's always good to see. Now, as I say, ships, boats, and floats, aircraft, things like that, that hasn't actually changed too much here so far. Moving on to the actual map itself. So we'll start off with some of the news from the Kharkiv region. So the Kharkiv mayor reported that two districts were targeted by Russian missiles overnight. Now, the Russian army shelled these districts with S-300 missiles and it's never good to see that, but it was on the south eastern side there. Moving on to the Donbass region, where there is always certainly a little bit of action, we will start off with the Slovyansk and Kramatorsk regions here, particularly Slovyansk. So there have been Russian attempts uh, to take this city, but information indicates that the Russian troops actually just failed and withdrew. Now, this is going to be quite difficult for them to take because, again, there's a lot of natural obstacles here, which makes it very, very difficult to take towns like these and, and push forward in general. If we were to move down to the Bakhmut region here and the city there, there was also another Russian offensive repelled. So Russians aren't doing, doing too great on the front lines of their Donbass region there either. Now, with the, the Donetsk region and the Donetsk Oblast here, I just zoom down a bit here now. Let's see. So there actually have been a lot of mass civilian evacuations in the Donetsk Oblast and city here. Most of the, the 1.7 million people who live in this region around here have in fact been re relocated probably further east, I suspect, a lot further east. There's a lot of room to move, literally. But uh, despite heavy artillery, shelling, that sort of thing, Russian troops still couldn't break through the Ukrainian defense lines here. They're not making a lot of progress, the Russian troops, for sure. Also within the Donetsk region in particular, you'll see a town here, the, the Sh Shins, uh, I call it Shins there. Now, this Shins town was, uh, there, there were in fact fires reported here deep behind the Russian, M M sorry, deep behind the Russian enemy lines, if I can get my words out there today. It's hard to determine though, as current, if these are just natural fires or supply depots, like military supply depots. Although I will tell you about three or four weeks ago, there was a military supply depot destroyed by the Ukrainian army right here. So, more information perhaps to follow there shortly there too. Back onto the front line though, we'll have a look at Piski for a moment. So this is a small time, our town just outside the, the front lines here. Now, of course, Russia would love to get it because if you zoom in a little bit, it's actually sort of like a suburb, an outer suburb of the Donetsk city there. But uh, Ukrainians still control Piski right here, despite Russian claims over the settlement. So yeah, Russia just does not seem to have been able to make much progress on the Donbass front line so far. Let's zoom out and move down a little bit to the um, Marinets city here. Now, in fact, yesterday, you might remember I've mentioned about Nikopol. There was a bit of shelling there. There was some shelling at Marinets here uh, overnight, uh, of which it was just 50 or so private residences damaged. 
nothing in the, the sort of the key strategic military type of way there at all. And uh, of course, moving across back to the Kherson region where we have a large number of Russian troops on the northern bank right here of the Dnipro River, all on the front line. Now, the UK intelligence has warned that, uh, of course, as we know, Russia is amassing troops in the south of Ukraine here, but the purpose of the buildup is not yet clear, so they say. But many analysts speculate that Russia is spreading its resources thin as it attempts to sort of save the area from counter-offensives from the Ukrainians, which is happening all over the front lines of the country really now. So that's really good to see there too. Now, just lastly in news, so uh, Ukraine has actually detained two people accused of being Russian spies. Now, uh, apparently they've been providing Russia with coordinates for missile strikes in the Mykolaiv and Odessa region. So around here, these spots here. This happens occasionally and it's always nice to hear when people like this really, they really are effectively spies, aren't they? Smoked out and detained. Now moving a little bit back across to the Zaporizhia region uh, in terms of news. So of course the nuclear power plant has been fired on or shelled upon uh, by Russia and the EU has accused Russia of breaching safety rules after rockets uh, damaged part of the nuclear power plant there, right here in fact. And uh, there is in fact a bit of a buildup of Russian troops here as well. So, and the, the photo shows that here. But uh, what seems to have happened is there was a building and power lines that were affected at the nuclear power plant, uh, which is not great for any nuclear power plant because it does need power to keep the reactors cool and things of that nature there. Now, zooming a bit back out, but uh, the Ukrainian president, Volodymyr Zelensky, said that at least 1,060 out of the 3 1,600 settlements have been liberated from the Russian occupation. However, most of them require significant restorative work and demining. In fact, there are frozen Russian accounts to the amount of about $600 billion in the United States. And after all is said and done with the war, this money is likely to be reallocated to the restoration of Ukraine, which is a nice kind of a creative solution to a, to a war problem. But that's about it for now, guys. Just keeping it quick and simple today, as I say every day, but it does drag on. Apologies for that one. But um, thanks for watching. Please leave a comment, subscribe. Don't worry about the trolls in the comments. Show them who's who. Give me a like. And yeah, I do hope to see all of you guys there in the next one. Cheers.